Hey, hey, cats and kittens, it's Doc Hammond, and I'm back to tell you another story. Now, I've told you some stories before about my friend Walt Walters and his buddy Stumpy the Squirrel, and I thought I might tell you another story today about that. Wait, wait hold on just a minute. Somebody's, somebody's saying something to me here. Oh, this is my buddy Burwell, the gray squirrel. He's, uh, he's actually one of Stumpy's brother, brothers. Um, Burwell and Lansdowne are Stumpy's two brothers, and and this guy seems to want to say something to me, so let me let me listen for a minute. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Well, you see, um, Lansdowne's a little bit nervous this morning. Um, I decided what story I wanted to tell you about, um, and and it's a story that involves a character that frightens a lot of squirrels and and other small animals. So I just want to reassure Lansdowne that things are okay. Don't don't worry, buddy. I'm here. Okay. He's not going to do anything to hurt you. Okay. You just go on back over here and sit down again and things will be fine. So maybe I should show you the other, the other character in this story because uh, he's sitting here and you're, you're probably wondering what's going on. And, and here he is. This is Rusty. Rusty the red-tailed hawk. And and you can see he's got a big, sharp beak. And part of the reason he's called a red-tailed hawk, you'll see in just a moment as I turn him around. And you can see his red tail. Look at that. And his speckled underbody like that. But uh, you can understand why Lansdowne and Burwell and Stumpy might be a little bit worried about, about him. Even my buddy George the Chipmunk, who's pretty quick and can hide you know, down in his burrow pretty fast. And they're all not very comfortable about having Rusty around. So just so you know. Well, the story I want to tell you today uh, goes back to a summer a couple years back. Uh, as you know, Walt and Stumpy live out at Kibby Pond in Townsend in, in the cozy cabin that Walt has. They have a wonderful dock down in the water where they can feed the the bluegill sunfish, uh, and attached to the dock is Walt Dory, uh, whose name is Nellie, and he has a three horsepower Johnson outboard motor attached to the back of it so that they can putt around the pond and check out all the sights, and, and that's something they do just about every morning. Now, I wanted to explain before we start, uh, like Burwell and like Lansdowne, whom you've met today and for other stories, Stumpy is a gray squirrel, okay? Now, like almost all kinds of animals, gray squirrels can have different color variations. There can be albino gray squirrels with all white fur and pink eyes. And that, that condition results when they lack all color pigment in their skin. There can also be what are called melanistic squirrels who are very dark. They're black furred, and that's because um, they have too much pigment or coloration in their skin and fur. Uh, but Stumpy is neither an albino nor a melanistic squirrel. He's, he's just a regular gray squirrel. He's got a stub of a tail, which he lost in an accident. Uh, but other than that, he's pretty typical of gray, gray squirrels. Um, we know from some other stories you might have heard that Stumpy is pretty brave for a little fella. He's small, but he'll stand up to all sorts of other creatures. Uh, I've, I've seen him stand up to a skunk and a great big snapping turtle. And uh, you might have heard the story I told about Stumpy dancing on the head of a bear to help Walt and his young friend Tony get back home safely after blueberry picking. So Stumpy, Stumpy's a pretty brave character, but he does have one fear. He suffers from what's sometimes called astrophobia or brontophobia. Now, some of you are, are dinosaur fans, and, and you know about brontosaurs. Uh, the, the word brontosaur actually means thunder lizard. And the, the beginning of that word, bronto, stands for thunder. So what it is that Stumpy's afraid of is thunder and lightning. He gets really scared in, in big storms. All of that, I think, started uh, even, uh, even the year before the story I'm going to tell you took place. Uh, and that was the year that a small tornado actually touched down at Kibby Pond, and it brought with it a really violent thunderstorm. 
And Stumpy at the time was still quite young and getting used to living with Walt. Uh, and when the thunder struck, he didn't know what it was. And he scurried down into the basement of Walt's cabin and uh, hid himself as well as he could. In fact, he ended up inside an electric fry pan with a glass cover on top. And that fry pan was inside a box sitting on the back shelf of, of, one, of the, uh, one of the shelves in the basement of Walt's cabin. Uh, there was a good thing that came out of that storm. Of course, uh, when Walt found Stumpy sitting on the shelf next to the box that Stumpy was in was a photograph that Walt had been looking for for a long time. It was a photograph of himself with his wife, Annie, who passed away a long time ago, uh, 25 years or more. Uh, and so he was very happy to find that, that picture and to be re reminded of those happy times. Well, Going back to this summer day, uh, Tony and Amy Rigetti, Walt's neighbors from down the road, Amy the young mother and, and Tony her son, who was about six years old at the time, had come up to join Walt and Stumpy on their morning cruise around the pond. Just about every morning, Walt takes Nellie out, and uh, frequently uh, Amy and, and Tony will join him. Now, some of the stories you'll hear about Walt and Stumpy come from a little bit later on after Amy's husband, Anthony, has returned from Afghanistan, where he was serving in the armed forces. And even some of those stories are later still, after Tony has two or three little sisters. So this is an early story today, going back uh, to the time when Amy and Tony were living down the road by themselves. Well, after their, their ride in the boat, they came up onto the deck at Walt's cabin to have a little snack, a, a mid-morning snack, uh, some, some juice and some muffins that Walt had made. And while they were sitting there, a car pulled into the driveway, and out of it stepped a jolly-looking man uh, with, with a balding head uh, and a red mustache. And he introduced himself as Jim Barack. Now, Jim was a scientist. And it turned out that he was very interested in studying melanistic squirrels, those squirrels that are, are black uh, because of, of something that goes on in the, in the color of their skin and their, and their fur. Um, and so he stopped by and he said, uh, you must be Walt Walthers, and I understand that you're the resident expert about squirrels around here. And Walt said, well, no, I don't, I don't know about that, but uh, this fellow here, sitting on my shoulder uh, is a gray squirrel, and uh, we've gotten to be pretty good buddies. What, what can I do for you? Well, Jim said, I'm, I'm studying melanistic squirrels, and I just wanted to know if you've, you've seen any squirrels around here with unusually dark pigmentation. Well, Walt had to say, I hate to disappoint you, but Stumpy here is about as dark as they get. We haven't, we haven't seen any, any squirrels with black fur. But you know, I'd be happy to give you a call if we do see some. And Jim said, thanks. And he actually sat down and, and had a muffin and, and some juice along with the rest of them before he left. Well, that night, Amy and Tony decided that they wanted to invite Stumpy to come down to their house. Just It was just a little ways down the road from the cabin and have a sleepover. And while Walt was a little concerned that Stumpy might get homesick and probably even more concerned that he was going to miss Stumpy a great deal. Um, he, nevertheless, Walt thought it would, would be a lot of fun for Stumpy and Tony. And so he said, yeah, well, let's, let's do it. I'll bring him down a little bit later. Well, Walt dropped Stumpy off, went back to the cabin, and Stumpy had a great time while Amy was preparing supper and, and she was... Um, she was making a pie crust out of flour, so she had her big flour jar open on the counter and, uh, and, and was working on the pie crust. While she was doing that, Tony and Stumpy were playing hide-and-seek. They were running all throughout the house, taking turns hiding. And, of course, Stumpy could find a lot of great hiding places that Tony couldn't fit into because Stumpy's that much smaller. But they had a lot of fun. Uh, and when they were done with that, they, they came downstairs, and while Amy was continuing to cook, Stumpy noticed that up on the big rafter overhead, over the table where she was preparing the pie, uh, were a number of baskets hanging. And he thought, 
it would be fun to get up there and climb and explore in the baskets. And that's exactly what he did. He's climbing around in the baskets when all of a sudden, something Walt had warned them about earlier, they heard a thunder strike. There was a big crash of thunder. And poor Stumpy, without even thinking about what he was doing, he threw himself out of that basket up off the ceiling and landed right in Amy's flower jar. And he ran around and around inside that flower jar and he sent up a big white cloud of flour and finally knocked it over and, and rolled out onto the tabletop. And there he was, completely white. Well, Amy could see how upset he was, so she picked him up and went over and sat on the couch with him. And, and Tony came and joined them. And Amy had learned from Walt that one thing that Stumpy really loves is to have a one-fingered nose rub. It just calms him down. And so she did that to Stumpy, and he relaxed finally in her lap. She looked at him and she said, you know, that, that Jim Barack was interested in melanistic squirrels. I wonder if he'd be interested to hear that you've turned into an albino. Well, Stumpy didn't think that was too funny, but he was grateful that Amy was cuddling him and stroking his nose. The next day, uh, Amy and, and Tony took Stumpy back up to Walt's cabin. And Walt invited Tony to stick around for a while because Nathan the chimney sweep was coming from Stevenson Stoves up in Milford, and he was going to clean Walt's chimney. Walt has a wood stove. Um, he has a furnace in the basement, but he also has a wood stove that he uses quite a bit, and he burns wood as one of his sources of heat, especially in cold weather. But when you have a wood-burning stove, you have to have somebody come and get up on the roof and, and clean out the pipes that go down from the top of the chimney down into the wood stove. And you have to do it even when you have a furnace sometimes, too. So Nathan was somebody that, who'd been coming out to the, the cabin for several years now. And Walt and he had always had a lot of fun joking around with each other. Well, he arrived. And um, when he did, Walt looked up and he saw flying over the cabin in a circle, a great big hawk. And Tony looked up at the same time and Stumpy looked up and Stumpy sort of slid over right next to Walt so he wouldn't be quite so visible. And Walt said, wow, look at that great big raptor. Well, all of a sudden, Tony started laughing. And Walt said, what, what is it, Tony? What's so funny? And, and Tony said, Mr. Walt, Mr. Walt, that's, that's not a raptor flying around up there. That's not a dinosaur. That's some kind of bird. And Walt said, oh, Tony, okay, yeah, you know about raptors, velociraptors, and things like that. But in fact, the word raptor is a word that also means a bird of prey. Any kind of bird that hunts is called a raptor, especially owls and hawks and, and big birds like that. So all I was saying really was that that was some kind of hunting bird up there. I didn't mean to say it was a dinosaur. Well, at that point, Nathan was ready to get started. And he got a, a lot of equipment out of his van. He set up a ladder so he could go up on the roof. And of course, Walt and Tony were going to watch from down on the ground. But Stumpy, who loves to climb things, had decided that he would supervise Nathan's work and, and probably even give him some advice about how to do it better than he was doing it already. So Stumpy climbed up on the roof with Nathan. And Nathan was calling back down to Tony to explain what he was doing. And one of the things he said was, Tony, now one of the things you have to do as a chimney sweep is to take off a cap if a chimney has a cap. And a lot of people, like Mr. Walt there, put caps on their chimneys, metal caps, to keep squirrels and birds and other animals from getting down inside them and, and blocking them up. And that's exactly what Mr. Walt's got up here. He's got a nice metal cap that fits snugly over the chimney. So I'm going to take that off as the first thing I do. And then inside it are the two pipes that I have to clean. Uh, and, and then he's, he called out to Walt and Nathan said, Hey, hey, Walt, um, you think it'd be okay if instead of using my chimney sweep brush this time, I just attach a, a string to Stumpy and, and drop him down in there and then pull him up and down a couple of times? 
And Walt laughed and said, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Stumpy would really like that if you did it. I, I, think, I think probably we'd better let you use your brush. And that's exactly what Nathan was ready to do. Well, he climbed back down the ladder to, to the ground to, to get all his equipment and bring it up with him. And while he was down there sorting it out, Stumpy had gotten a little bit bored. So he stretched out to do a little sunbathing right along the ridge of the roof line. He lay back on his back and just sort of opened up his legs so that he could soak up any sun he could get. And it was probably a good thing that he did decide to lie on his back because that way his eyes were looking up into the sky. And I don't know whether he actually saw something or if he felt a change in the air pressure as that big red-tailed hawk got closer. But whatever happened, it was a good thing that he did roll right off the ridgetop because the red-tailed hawk came down and hit right where he had been lying. While Stumpy rolled down, he jumped up and he scattered and he ran, zigzagged back and forth, and that hawk finally had a chance to turn around and come back. But before it could get to Stumpy, he had made it over to the chimney and he'd hopped up and he'd slid right down into one of the chimney pipes. Well, that got him away from the red tail, but it put him in kind of a pickle because now he was stuck down in that pipe and he couldn't get back up out. So Walt and Nathan and Tony all ran inside the cabin. And Nathan said, I'll open the flue. Walt, when you're ready, and when I've got the flue open, open up the door. And so Walt did that. He opened the door of the wood stove, and there was Stumpy. Stumpy stumbled out onto the floor. He was coughing and sneezing and spitting. And you know what? He was covered in soot and creosote, and he was no longer a gray squirrel. He had turned black. Well, Walt was relieved that Stumpy was okay, but he couldn't help laughing a little bit too because Stumpy looked so funny. And and Tony looked at Walt and he said, Mr. Walt, is, is this what Mr. Jim meant when, when he talked about those black-furred melon-eating squirrels? And Walt laughed and he said, well, no, I don't think that's quite what Jim had in mind when, when he mentioned melanistic squirrels, Tony. I would say that Stumpy doesn't look so much melanistic as he does look melancholy and sad. But I think we can cheer him up if we take him out and uh, give him a little bath and we can turn him back into a gray squirrel. That's so strange. He was a white squirrel the other night. He's a black squirrel right now. I hope we can get him back to the right color. <laughs>